Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to the Netherlands once again and we're going to have a look at yet another of the beers that I brought back with me from my recent trip down there. So for this one, we are going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel once before, although that was a very long time ago in about 2014. So definitely going to be interesting to return to these guys after such a long time. And I think it's fair to term these guys as one of the most recognisable craft beer brands in the Netherlands. You can find quite a few of their beers in different supermarkets and things like this. But yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. So for this review, we are going to head to Harlem, out to the west of Amsterdam, and we're having a look at another beer from Jopen Beer. So this one is called the La La Lager. It comes in at 5.5% ABV, and this one is a Merzen style lager beer. And I actually had no idea until I went to the Netherlands that Merzen's were quite a big deal there as well. I knew they were big in Germany, but I had no idea that they were so big in the Netherlands as well. But uh, yeah, this beer, I believe, was bought at the Bierwinkel in Leiden to the south of Amsterdam, which is an awesome beer shop. Crazy amount of unusual Belgian stuff. Lots of nice new modern Dutch craft beer, as well as a number of interesting foreign things. So do check them out. I'll put the link to their Facebook page and Instagram in the video description below. And this was recommended to me by Peter. So uh, yeah, he said this is a very nice example of a Mertzen Lager beer. So yeah, he's given me some really good beers so far, so there's no reason not to believe him on this one as well. But definitely curious to see how this one turns out. The last beer that I had from Jopen Beer on the channel was, um, it was called Hopfen Beer, if I remember right there, Hopfen Beer. I think, but I also reviewed one with my um, good friend Thomas from Thomas Opened, and I think that was a triple IPA. I think that was on his channel rather than mine, in fact. So uh, yeah, I have had a, a open beer a little bit more recently than 2014. But uh, yeah, definitely cool to do another dedicated review to these guys after such a long time. And you will see me review another beer from these guys fairly soon as well. But uh, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. Always cool to review some new Dutch beers for you here on the channel. And I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one. So since it is a Dutch review, a massive shout out to my friends in the Dutch Beer Collective. That is Remy Den Doop, who is Beer Geek Holland, the OG Dutch beer tuber, my friend and lover. Thomas Hoendam, who is Thomas Opent. We have the Black IPA Slag, uh, Herben Caspers, who is Dutch Beer Geek. And then we have Beers with Douglas as well, who is the most gangster of the lot of them. Um, lovely guys doing some really interesting reviews, mainly reviewing in Dutch, but they have got quite a few English videos as well. But if you want to keep up to date with, up to date with the Dutch beer scene, those are the guys that you need to check out. Check out the links to the Dutch Beer Collective Facebook and Instagram pages, and there you'll get access to all four of their channels so uh yeah go and give them a bit of love give them a subscribe and a like and all of this kind of thing and uh, go and check out some of their reviews lovely guys very knowledgeable about their beers and they were very hospitable to me when i was down in the netherlands quite recently so um yeah let's crack on with this then so as always with my reviews i'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that i've done from your and beer and you will see more added to that list in the near future of course but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the dutch beers that i've reviewed for you that's being added to quite regularly at the moment because i do still have a good supply of dutch things left and I'm sure we'll add to that regularly as well beyond that. But as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, onto my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Jopen beer. And I will apologize for any bad Dutch pronunciations in this. It's still a little bit difficult for the mouth, of course, but uh, yeah. So, Jopen, as I've mentioned to you already, are from Harlem in the Netherlands to the west of Amsterdam. And once upon a time, Harlem was actually among the most important brewing cities in the Netherlands. And the beer used to be transported around the city in 112 litre barrels known as Jopen, hence the name of this beer or this brewery. 
But the open beer was produced originally by the Stichting Harlem's Biergenootschap, which is the Harlem Beer Society, and this organisation was founded back in 1992. But their main motive was to recapture some of the ancient beer recipes that used to be produced in the city in order to commemorate the city's 750th anniversary, and they wanted to return them to the modern beer market. But two beer recipes were found in the Harlem City Archives, and the first of these dated from 1407, and this entered the market under the name Coit after being brewed at uh, KU Leuven uh, down in Belgium in 1995. But the beer was later called Jopen after those wooden barrels that we mentioned earlier. And then in 1996, Jopen BV uh, Beer Company was officially established. So yeah, that was the birth of the Jopen brand, although the history goes back, as we say, to about 1995 or I guess 1992 with the um with the with the Harlem Beer Society as well, but um initially the Jopen beers were brewed in the Halfman Brewery in Hulstown in Belgium. Then they were brewed at the Trap Brewery, the Trappist Brewery in Berkel Enschut, and then in Erkvelde down in Belgium again at the Van Steenberg Brewery. So in 2005 it was announced that Jakobskirk in Central Harlem, Jacobs Church to translate it into English, but Jakobskirk was going to be transformed into a brewery, and then this was occupied by Jopen, who opened the doors to it to the public in 2011 and this place is also home to a cafe and restaurant as well and this is known as Jopenkirk so hopefully I can go there and film an out and about video for you at some point I think the next time I go down to the Netherlands that is a little bit of a must do and hopefully things are opened up a little bit more than they were when I was there before. But yeah, in 2013, they began to build a new production facility in Valdopolder Industrial Park to meet the international demand for their beer. And it's there that the majority of their stuff is actually produced today. This is where they do all their canning and bottling and things like this. But as of April 2021, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 280 different kinds of beer, according to Untapped. And the current Jopen brewer is Chris Visse. So um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Jopen beer for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can, of course, check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all those different beers that they've done. So, um, yeah, let's crack on and have a taste of this then. I'm getting a bit thirsty after that uh, that history section. So, yeah, just to let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. You can see this red symbol here, this is the symbol for Jopen beer. Uh, and as I said before, we had uh, Thomas and I reviewed uh, their triple IPA together, which is really nice. I need to see about getting a, um, a bottle of that to do a solo review of. And I think there's an Imperial Stout that you can get in the supermarkets as well that's fairly common. So we'll need to see about getting those. But um, yeah, nicely presented this one. As you can see at the top there, there is La La Lager. 5.5% Mertzen beer this one and it says on the side here this is not just any beer you're holding right now anything but boring that's our motto meaning that everything we brew is atypically tasty and definitely different a contrast to the common but only you can be the judge stop reading this label tilt your head back and enjoy the, your divine craft beer so uh, yeah let's get it out and then we'll get on, the on with the tasting then there you can see at the bottom of the can anything but boring. So let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. Interestingly, um, it also says that this one contains wheat. Mm. So interesting, heifer. Yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. A 5.5% Mertzen Lager Beer. So uh, remember the technical definition of a lager beer is bottom fermenting yeast. So that's yeast which ferments at a temperature of between uh, you know, about 8 to 10 or 8 to 12 degrees Celsius, I guess we could say. These are lager beers. The Merzen lager beer, of course, was brewed in March in Germany, hence the name. Um, we'll just take a look at the head of this before it disappears. You can see the head is a nice sort of um, fawny, kind of ivory type colour. That is just going to fade away to be a very thin foamy layer though. And you can see it was about, it poured with about a half finger head, but there it's gone. But yeah. The story of the Merzen lager beers was that um, in Germany, according to the laws there, you couldn't brew beer between, I think it was March and uh, October. So what they used to do was they brewed, they brewed a stronger beer. They put it in the kellers because they dug all these kellers to keep the beer cool for the fermentation because you didn't have artificial refrigeration at that time. And then they brought the beer back up in time to drink in October. So this is why you get many Oktoberfest Merzens, although the Fest beers now are a little bit different. You know, those are lighter, more kind of Hellas type lagers, in fact. But yeah, the Merzen beer originates 
from the fact that you couldn't brew beer during the summer months in Germany. So they put the beer in the cellars in March, they let it ferment, and then they brought it out in October again, hence the name Märzen. But yeah, the Märzen beer typically is a kind of sort of ambery coloured lager beer. It's usually got a bit more of a kind of bready and biscuity kind of feel to it. And in the Czech Republic, you also have the Letzak uh, as well, which is the Czech version of the amber lager. The Vienna lager, I guess, is kind of loosely related as well, but it's a little bit more kind of oily and smooth and bready, if that makes sense. But um, yeah, that's that. So um, yeah, you could, of course, you've got lots of different types of lagers. Helles, Dunkel, Schwarzbier, Bock, Doppelbock, in Germany, then you've got the um, Svetli, Leitzak, Czerny, Tmavi in the Czech Republic. Um, so, yeah, and they, of course, correspond to the German styles too. But, yeah. So this one, nice sort of German-style Merzen, or, if you want to go into the Czech side of things, uh, uh, Leitzak. But, yeah, lovely-looking beer, this one. A nice, rich amber colour, which you would expect from the um, from the style. This one's actually... A little bit lighter than some of the ones that I've come across before. This one almost looks a little bit like a West Coast IPA in some ways, which is quite interesting. This is definitely one of the lighter Mertzens I've come across in terms of colour. But remember, the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use, and two, the length of your wort boil. I think a lager beer like this is going to undergo a, a wort boil of like 75 minutes or maybe 90 something like that but the longer you boil the sugars the more the the longer you boil the water the more the sugars canalize us you get a dark color of beer adjuncts and barrel aging can also affect um the color of your beer too but those variables are not at play in this particular beer but it certainly looks um it certainly does look very nice this one but definitely one of the lighter looking mertzens in terms of color that i've come across before one or two big bubbles as i say sticking towards the side of the glass a few little ones going up towards what's left of the head which is just a very thin wispy layer but uh, yeah, certainly looks the part. Bit of natural haze there, but in terms of appearance, nothing particularly surprising about this beer when you consider what style it is. So let's have a little look at the aroma then and see what we can get with this one. Mm. Yeah, it smells pretty nice, I have to say. Um, so it comes across as a little bit oily as well, which is interesting. But with this one, you definitely have a little bit of that. Um, you've definitely got a little bit of that sort of bready base to it you can smell that nice slightly kind of wholemealy type bread to it but there's a mix there's almost a mix of a kind of white bread and a sort of there's a mix of a white bread and a sort of bread crusty element coming out of this one so yeah i really like how that um i really like how that goes together but yeah a little bit of a kind of sweeter um a little bit of a kind of sweeter caramelly element in there as well you do get a little bit of a straight up caramel with this one and you can smell that it's a little bit boozy as well which is interesting Mertzens, um the original Oktoberfest Mertzens, i'm sure were pretty strong actually you know those used to be um you know those used to be a way up at like seven eight percent from what uh, from what my my bamberg friend daniel tells me but um yeah this one does have a little bit of that kind of booziness to it even though it's only five and a half percent which is normal strength for uh, for a Mertzen these days but yeah definitely a little bit of a kind of sweet concentrated caramel note out of this one you do get a little bit of that kind of biscuity McVitie's digestive sort of biscuity vibe out of this one which I really like as well and um, yeah so white bready base a bit of bread crust in there some sweet caramel a little bit of biscuit and you do almost get a little bit of that kind of Werther's original kind of butter candy type thing out of this beer as well um, maybe there's one or two very slight woody undertones to the beer, but other than that, I don't think there's um, too much to report on the malty side of things. On the hoppy side, um, it is pretty much what you would expect. It's got those nice kind of noble elements to it. So a little bit of, um, there's definitely a little touch of earthiness to this one. I think it's German noble hops they've used in this because it has that typical brightness of sort of Hallertau, Tentnangers, but it does smell just a little bit more bitter. So maybe they've used a little bit of Pearl or Hercules or, you know, one of the slightly higher alpha acid German hops in this because normally the Hallertaus and the Tentnangers are about five. Um, I think they might, they might even be less than that. They might even be about four and a half percent alpha acid and the Pearl is like five and a half and then Hercules, I think, is about seven or something like this. There's various other ones in there too, of course, that you can use. You've got Mandarina Bavaria and um, Hallertau Blanc, high alpha acid hops from Germany these days. But, um, yeah, the aroma of this one is quite noble like which is what you would expect from the style so a little touch of earthiness and they're quite a smooth earthiness at that you've got quite a bright floral aromaticity to this one as i say it does smell just a little tiny touch spicy which makes me wonder if it is one of the higher 
half acid German hops in there and there's a little bit of a kind of grassiness on the front tip of the nose which I uh, can really appreciate as well so lovely smelling beer this one I think it goes together very very well um yeah the aroma of this one is um it's great actually I really like how this this goes together so um yeah the fruity side of things then it is kind of again what you would expect there's a little bit of a um there is a little bit of a kind of um sort of peary and apple ester to this one which i really like so yeah the yeah a little bit of a peary kind of apple ester to this one which is great um yeah so yeah it's peary it's apple it's um it's just great it's great actually i really like how this um i really like how this one goes about its business for sure but yeah peary appley maybe a little bit of a kind of grassy ester in there as well other than that there's maybe a wee touch of apricot and that's about it you've got a little bit of that kind of apricotty sultana dried fruity kind of thing that you often get from these uh, slightly more kind of biscuity caramelly lager beers other than that i don't think there's too much to say about the aroma of this one so um yeah it's um it's a nice smelling beer you can see the head on it has disappeared so i think it's about time that we uh, we took a taste of this one to see what it's all about but uh yeah this one is the la la lager coming in at five or the la la mertzen lager i should say coming in at 5.5 percent abv from Jopen beer in harlem to the west of amsterdam down in the netherlands let's get stuck into this one slanja skull cheers prost i should say as well Yeah, it's a fairly solid beer, that. And I think it's fair to say, you know, this one is pretty authentic, actually. First impression of it is, it's quite an oily one. It strikes me as being quite an oily um, Mertz and Lager as well. But, um, yeah, it's kind of got everything you would expect, actually. It does have a nice kind of biscuity lean, but, yeah, compared to other Mertzens I've had recently, and we're in sort of my box season at the moment, and we're getting a few Mertzens as well, which is very interesting. But um, yeah, here in yeah here in Sweden, there's quite a few Mertzens coming out just now, which is quite quite strange. But yeah, a lot of my box as well, which is great. But yeah, this one definitely strikes me as being a little touch more oily, which is very interesting. But yeah. It's a solid, solid beer, that. I think it's fair to say, you know, this is not going to be the craziest beer you'll get from Yopin. And they do have some pretty mental things, actually. That big triple IP that you can buy in the supermarket for about two euros or something. That is a pretty impressive beer for um, for what it is. But And they've got some big Imperial Stouts and stuff like this, too. So this isn't the craziest one you're going to get. But for a kind of nice, easy drinking thing, which is what it's intended as, it certainly works. So... Yeah, if you come across this beer and you like a Mertzen, you will enjoy this one. Let's try and break down the flavour a little bit for you and see how we go. So, um, straight across the middle of the palate with this beer then, you get a nice, um, as I say, you get a nice kind of... Um, smooth, kind of brown, wholemealy, bready sort of thing. That just goes right across the... Um, just goes right across the middle of your palate there. The further you go into the aftertaste, it does definitely develop a little bit more of a kind of graininess, which I can certainly appreciate. This does actually come to be quite a sort of grainy beer. And if you go to the front kind of corners of your palate and move diagonally back, it does develop just a little touch of woodiness as well, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, backbone of this beer is a sort of homely, brown bready sort of thing, and the graininess becomes a little bit more prominent the further you go into the aftertaste you get a little bit of a white bready character sitting on top of that and a few bread crusty elements as well but then right in the dead center of your palate you get a sweet sort of oily caramelly element coming out of the beer too so yeah so yeah quite a bit of that coming out of this beer for sure as well but um yeah as you move out from the center of your palate it develops a little bit more of a kind of biscuity grainy sort of element you do get a little bit of that um kind of mcvitsey's digestive biscuity sort of thing there and um, 
I don't get the sort of Werther's original butter candy type thing that I was picking up in the um, in the aroma of the beer. It's definitely more a kind of straight up um, biscuity um, type thing that you're getting out of this one. But I think that covers the middle third of the palate quite well, to be honest with you. On the border region between middle third and back third of your palate, on the yeah, on that middle region between middle third and back third of your palate, you have a little bit more of a sort of um, there's definitely a little bit more of a kind of, how would we say, um, bready, the, yeah, there's a little bit more of a sort of bread crusty, doughy kind of thing there. Then the back third of your palate is all about that kind of grainy base that the beer has. On top of that, you get a nice kind of yeasty element to the beer, so you can feel that there's a bit of a kind of taller flavour on that um, back third of your palate. So yeah, that works pretty well in this one for sure. But yeah, back third of your palate, you've got that nice kind of more yeasty element coming out of this one, which I think um, works well. But if you start at the back of that, um, if you start at the back third, at the very back of your palate, you can feel the flavour kind of starts being this tall, then it condenses down a little bit. As you go into the middle third of your palate, it condenses down quite a bit. Then the middle third of your palate is quite kind of squashed together and condensed in a sense. But um, yeah, I like how all of that flavour goes together but yeah um in the back corners of the palate then you've got a nice little bit of earthiness out of this one as you move further forward it's a little touch herbal and as you go around the um as you go around the kind of front um as you go around the kind of front uh towards the, the front corners of your palate to say it gets a little bit kind of more floral and spicy i think this is as i say a slightly higher alpha acid german hop in there but round the front curve of the tongue it's got a little bit of a nice zesty kind of grassiness to it as well which i can uh, which i can certainly appreciate but um yeah it works very nicely it does work very very nicely um but yeah front third of your palate then the fruity side of things so again border region between front third and middle third of your palate you can feel there's a bit of a sort of doughy a little bit more of a kind of yeasty doughy kind of build up sort of thing which i certainly like um so yeah, that works pretty well, I would say. Um, and then the base of that front third of your palate is a sort of biscuity and grainy, bready kind of thing. And then on top of that, you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. And on the front third of your palate, you've got, you can feel that it's a kind of sultana, like a dried white green grapey sort of thing. That forms the base of the beer. And then you've got all these kind of, at, at the back, for me, at the back of that front third of your palate, it's a little bit more sort of peary in a sense. I do get a little bit of a peary ester out of this one. And as you move further forward, um, as I say, you've got that sort of sultana kind of base on the front third of your palate. And it develops a little bit more of a kind of apple-y note to it, I would say. So, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting how all of that kind of all that pieces together and maybe in the aftertaste you can get one or two very slight apricot kind of flavours but yeah I'd say sort of sultana dried white green grapey base to the fruit side of things pear at the back a little bit more of a, a little yeah a little bit of pear at the back of the um the thing there and then a little bit more of a um, kind of apple note on the front um, the front curve of the tongue so or the front tip of the tongue if you like and then a wee bit of that kind of zesty grassy ester right on the edge but yeah in terms of a Mertzen beer it's kind of got everything you would want it's quite a nice one as I say a little bit more grainy than some have had a bit more oily in its mouthfeel and I think on that note we should examine the mouthfeel then so definitely a mid-bodied beer for me kind of bottom to middle of the spectrum I would say in the mid-bodied range absolutely carbonation is very very smooth in this one it really develops a nice little bit of a kind of slicker oiliness to it also which um which i think works um really quite well in terms of the hoppy side of things it's got a nice um in terms of the hoppy side of things i'd say that this beer has a sort of 20 25 um ibu side of things it's definitely got a 20 to 25 ibu side of things and then on the um, malty side of the beer, as I say, it's got a bit of a grainy base, but it got a little bit of a sweetness and a slight toastiness sitting on top of it. And you've got some nice juicy fruity elements to it as well. But um, yeah, 
it's um, it's kind of everything you'd expect from a Mertz and as I say just a slightly more oily example of the style in my opinion but yeah I think that kind of rounds off this review there to be honest it's as I say a solid enough Mertz and beer probably not the the most crazy and most exciting beer you're going to find from um, Yopen but you wouldn't expect that of a Mertz of course so that's not a that's not any way to knock the beer in any way, I guess we can say. But yeah, I think that's uh, this has been an interesting one to review and definitely nice to return to um, Yopen again. The next beer that you'll see me review from these guys is like a, a Weizenbock, if I remember rightly, a Weizen Doppelbock maybe. So you'll see that beer appear at some point over the uh, the next couple of weeks. I'm certainly looking forward to uh, to reviewing that one as well. But yeah, in the meantime, let's leave it at that for uh, for this one. This has been a nice Mertzen to review, and I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on it. So yeah, this was the La La Lager, 5.5% Mertzen Lager beer from Yopen Beer in Harlem in the Netherlands. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Yopen as well. We will no doubt return to these guys again beyond the next beer review that we do and I hope that you guys are enjoying my Dutch mini series. Check out all the guys at the Dutch Beer Collective as I said earlier. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below and we'll end this review there. Slange it, skull, cheers, prost and see you soon on the next review.